the screens now again my name is keg and welcoming back of the amazing camber what's up man let's try this one more time yeah we'll try it one more time you know i was trying to spew out some thoughts at you got a little miscombobulated with the technical difficulties but we're back and i'm talking about 4v4 this shift back from the format they went to 5v5 i think everybody's happy about 4v4 and they're playing on a lot of pcs nowadays everybody chasing the frames trying to get their specs up to the top level so they can win those extra gunfights. And on top of that, that's not all that's new this year. The CCL in the 2021 season is bringing you an all-new format with all new teams. We're excited about it here on the caster desk. I know those out there watching are as well and those playing. I uh, just really can't wait to get into the action for this season. Same, absolutely. Now, I'm not sure if it was shown on screen or not, but we have an amazing first map here <laughs> that I just absolutely love for Hardpoint. It's the first map to be featured post-release of the game, and it's a fan favorite of mine from when I was in 8th grade. Cam, you're around the same age as me. I think you were in 8th grade, too, when it came out, too. Raid, right? Yeah, and you were just getting ready to say, I, I don't think they've said, I thought you were going to tease the uh, the format video again. I think the people have had just a little bit enough of that oh, tonight no. so far on the Boston no, no, stream, no, 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 or on no. the Bravo stream. <laughs> But yeah, we're getting into Raid, and I think that's got to be a fan favorite. Everybody was excited to see this map come back, and we already get to hear that there's some more Black Ops 2 and some throwback maps that might get thrown into the mix. Express should be on the way here shortly, but Raid, yeah, what a great map. So many great hills on this map for Hardpoint. Really got to be rotating to that P2, that P3 hill, P4 as well. Just so many money hills, it feels like, on this map. Uh, a chance for some big blowout wins, a chance for some come-from-behind wins. You really just don't know what to expect here. And we're in the Midwest region. We're going to get to talk about it in a little bit. Neither of these teams have played in the CCL before, both new to the scene. So we'll get to see what we've got on our hands here in a little bit. Yeah, you could say for all of this, this is a brand new experience. We haven't really done anything with this new setup just yet or this even new format for the most part. But having two brand new teams sparks an amazing encounter for all of us together to kind of enter into a new realm of Call of Duty on our own. And I think seeing, I believe it's Nebraska versus NWMS go all up against each other here will be a fantastic game to watch. And again, like you mentioned on Raid, I think it's going to be really cool to see, especially those money hills. And I really want to see and you kind of pointed to it yourself camber a little bit more of those flanking wins maybe those long-range gunfights too that could really help secure the point absolutely and i mean i talk about some of the different hills on raid you go to that p2 hill well p1 to start pretty mixy you got a lot of off angles to play over by that ring you never know when someone's going to kill you from pillars got to worry about someone top laundry so much to worry about on that hill really mixy but once you start to get into p2 p3 p4 P5 pretty mixy as well. Those are the ones you're really going to want to set up early, get your rotation done, uh, and just make sure you're holding down all the different lanes because you can hold for a solid 60 seconds on any of those hills. Uh, and I think these teams are going to see how they play the rotations, what strategies they try to employ, who's going to have the gunny, who's bringing it, who's teed up right now <laughs> coming into the opening match of 2021. We're going to get to see it. Midwest region here, and I'm, I'm, I, if you can't tell by the look on my face, I'm fired up. I mean, normally this is the point where I ask you which team do you think is going to edge out the win here in this first map, but we don't really know a whole lot about these teams. Not a whole lot of information on them. Maybe individual players, yes, have been shown to be crazy in the past, but a lot of these teams really only started playing less than a month ago. Oh, yeah. but here we go. We're going into Raid now, Cam. New teams, a relatively new map at this point, and I'm really excited to see how this first point is going to go. It's going to... It's going to be an interesting one, and it's always interesting at the start of this map, too. What do you want to do with your AR player? One of your AR players, do you want to send them to mid to try to get that pinch onto pillars? I think if you're on the laundry side, you might just try to play a little safer play for that P2 rotation, but we'll see what strategies they deploy as we get into map one. Something interesting, too, and of course, I'm sure everyone watching knows this, is that it's no longer 5v5, it's 4v4, so that's going to mean a lot more important gunfights being held down on these points. But right away, we do see some early gunfights coming out from MW's side, finding so many different bodies, but Nebraska's is trying to hold down the hill as much as they can, but they're getting melted away. Though, the point is still in Nebraska's favor. They're able to hold on tight a little bit more. They have to push up and see if they can find one of those little mini flanks. Yeah, already a mixy P1 to start. Trying to keep up with things right now as Nebraska Esports has their top slayer going on a rampage. That's gray, and they get the Ooh. opening break here. Start to rotate over towards P2. So far, NWMS yet to get a point on the board as we get over into this kitchen hill. 
Damn, one person we do want to look at is Gray yet again able to find the hill. No, he's going to be traded out immediately, though, by Disarray. Able to find Gray and hold down the position just a little bit more. Disarray, now with the spawn switching around, is able to find Gray yet again. But even then, his teammate's going to be there to help back things up a little bit with four ATV to fall as well. This is a really good aggressive posture coming out from them. They are going to get traded out, but it's still going to show how much aggression they can bring to the table as they try to get to point two. Yeah, and I'm trying to keep up with you right now, Max. Got a little problem on oh, my no. side with the parsec. Uh, you might be better off telling me what's going on right now, honestly. But All we'll right. see if I can I'll get do this my best. out. I'll do my best to tell you the story. So the story being crafted so far is that we're seeing P2 still in the favor of Nebraska uh, Esports. With that being said, it's really Gray in Zyphos, I believe that's how you say his name, really holding down in terms of frags to make sure the team stays in a little, well, a little bit of a lead. By a lead, I mean over by 30 points. But complete destruction onto the site comes down once again as Gray is able to clobber everybody on site, except he's going to be taken down by Boosty instead. That's going to leave Boosty completely onto the site, and now it's going to transition over to P4 in the garage. With that being said, Nebraska is able to take over the site yet again, as leaving W and W scrambling to get back and try to find some points. They're able to climb things up a little bit more, only having a little bit over of a 10-point deficit. But even then, as Nebraska takes it over once again from Gray, almost single-handedly, it's going to leave the W, I'm sorry, NW, to really go a long ways to get back land. Are you with me, Cam? Yeah, well, I'm here. I can see this, the oh, leaderboards, no. at least. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm not sure I mean, if you can even hear me at this point. Oh, I can hear you. Oh, okay. Well... From, from what I could see on the scores, Nebraska doing a really good job rotating. And right now, got ATB with about 30 seconds on the P3 hill right now. Just trying to play these final kills. Get that final Ooh. 30 seconds of time before they start to rotate over towards basketball court. Uh, but yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll leave it with you, Max, because I'm having a hard time right now. Oh, no, it's still lagging? Just a little bit laggy. I haven't seen a whole lot of gameplay on my screen just yet, but I, I know who's winning. <laughs> okay. I, mean, I know hey, Nebraska I mean, that's, has that's the, the lead. most important part, right? <laughs> exactly. Oh, I'm glad you didn't see that though. Cam Cam Gray just came on but from behind, was able to find one to go down. It seems like he might be able to find the flank on two more. One on the ground, able to be caught out by Gray yet again. It's gonna be a double kill in his favor, but even then, they all get massacred away near the basketball court. That's gonna be where P4 is too, Cam. They're all gonna fall away. So it's a bit of a trade back and forth. We saw that very close, you know, line earlier between Nebraska and WN or N W might be able to stack it but even then that string has gone so far away nebraska now double the points over the bearcats esports right now able to find a little bit of traction on the ground but even then these single-handed plays by zyphos and gray have been really able to clobber each of the sites again clearing it all out once again zyphos able to find all of w and w and it's going to be more and more points in their favor cam keep in mind too there's not a lot a lot of time left on these points and we're going to be seeing a rotate once again it's a matter now of whether or not nebraska can hold on to this lead or if w and w can double their points but with all that being said and done by the middles of the tree do see a little bit more contestion than usual well, it looks like we are trying to figure out some technical difficulties at the moment but that's okay. We'll figure it out. Don't you worry. But from what we had seen up until now, and keep in mind, I can't see the gameplay as we speak. We did see Nebraska have a huge stranglehold on these sites, on the hard points. But at that, on top of it, we've also been able to see them extend themselves outwards even more. And because of those extensions, look at Zyphos right now. 21 and 8. Gray, not too far behind, being 13 and 11, have been really strong. But we're not going to forget about Trav and ATV either. They've also trailed a little bit behind with 8 kills, respectively. But they're able to put in the work that they need to do. It's a little bit similar, too, on the side of w, uh, NW, but they're not able to find the points on the board. They can find the frags, they can find the trades necessary to take over the site, but by the time they're able to clear it out, it's going to be another member of Nebraska to come in and usually single-handedly wipe things away. Things are changing around a little bit at this point, though. We're going back to P1, and Nebraska has control of it yet again. Gray already on a three multi-kill. That's going to be insane. And they're extending themselves out once again. They're going to be facing a 2v1 against one member of Dub and W, but they're going to use that as an advantage to try to take over the site. Cam, what's going on, man? Yeah, yeah I, I'm You're yeah, back? You know, I'm here, uh, yes! and I'll tell you what. I am actually seeing gameplay right now. The COD gods oh, have God. shined down on me. And I can actually see what's happening. And what I am seeing is Nebraska off to this huge lead. First thing that jumps up to me 
Zyphos, 23 and 9 right now on the board. This guy's having his time on the map. And if you're NWMS Esports, you're in a hole right now, right? You got to get this final 15 seconds on P1, and you got to start to rotate to P2. Everybody's going to have to start making big plays. You see ATB right now, back laundry, trying to slow the push. But how about the kill from Boosty? He's using that. The Bullfrog, I think it is. You don't see that a lot. He picks up a kill in the back, and it's up to Zyphos right now at the front, trying to hold things down. He's doing a really good job of that, getting this initial time. And we'll see how the break plays out here for NWMS. One important difference between these two teams, I think, too, is that we've been seeing a lot more rotates coming up from Nebraska towards the end of the point. And they're able to get on P2 or whichever point it is really, really quickly. NW haven't really been able to do that. They always have to fight an aggressive game. Nebraska find themselves on the defensive a little bit more. They can set their trophy systems down. That makes things a lot more difficult for the attacking team now they're trying to get it onto the site. Look, example, right there, Zyphos able to find Cushy. That's going to be another one gone. They have control of the site again. Yeah, and as you fall behind in a match like this, it only gets harder and harder as you see NWMS forced to push this hill from the front. It's not going to be an easy pass. You see Gray cleaning up the final kills to get this final time. NWMS, they are going to get the rotation here over to the garage, but once you start in a hole here on raid, it gets harder and harder to come back for those same reasons I talked about. So many of these hills, easy to hold, really just money hills up and down the board. And as we move into this garage hill, a chance, though, for NWMS to start to bring this one back a little bit. They need a solid hold. And Boosty right now playing out front has a chance to get two kills. He's going to get the first one with the spray. Second one comes through. Gray there for the trade. So now he's going to push onto the hill. Sunny getting kills back by the van, playing the life. And it's looking like a pretty solid hold so far for NWMS here on this hill. Yeah, well, the thing we haven't really been seeing too often is NWMS able to play off their lives at all, or really the teammates playing off each other really a whole lot. A lot of these are single plays coming out from Nebraska as well, don't get me wrong, but look at that, a double kill right there that we see on screen, and they have control of the point yet again. Now, they are looking around to see those attackers coming through, but yet again, and you did say yourself, Cam, that NW do have a chance to bring it back here, but look how close it is to 250. It might be too late. It's a whole 100-point difference in execution, though, no less, coming oh, up from no. Boosty. He's going to take down ATB, but even then, is that really going to be enough? Even with all the kills on the board right now that we see, especially from Boosty, it might be done and dusted as the point changes yet again. Yeah, one thing for sure, Boosty's having a good time. 30 kills, throw in an execution on top of that, and all with the Bullfrog. I might be trying out a new class later on tonight, but like you said, it is going to be a pretty tough task. Although NWMS does get the break, they do find themselves on the brink of a loss here. 232 points is getting very, very close for Nebraska, and Disarray doing everything possible to hold on to this point. Kills coming in, he's getting some support from a teammate, a big gun punch to hold on to this time, and it's not over just yet, Max. That's right, it's not over just yet, but all it takes is a single other point right now for Nebraska to end the game number one here. Gray able to find some kills on the boosty, able to get back onto the site. They only have to capture from down below. Sonny's there to able to make sure he trades out, but it's going to be another trade in reverse. Even then, NW seem to have stepped up their game so much points racking back up, and we haven't seen a single point in the favor of Nebraska for this entire point. This might be the only time we have not seen that happen just yet, as Gray seems to be struggling a little bit. He's going to fall to a grenade from Zyphos as well, and it's just a gigantic skirmish as we see Rotate go over to key number, I believe, three. Yeah, this is where it really, really is going to be difficult for NWMS to hang on to this game right now. So mixy at this middle hill. You just never know where the spawns are coming through. You got players right now for Nebraska just completely flooding it, and that is going to be enough to hang on to get the win. NWMS started to bring it back a little bit there. They get a full 60 on the basketball hill, but in the end, Nebraska able to hang on for the win in map one is kick off the 2021 season of the CCL. Not without a couple glitches on our end, but we got it done through there, through map one there. Uh, and we'll uh, get ready for map two here. Maybe we can't sort some of these things out. Hey, I'd rather have them now than at the end of the season. Exactly. This is the time to get the kinks out. But speaking of getting the kinks out, maybe map number one was what NWMS needed. They just need to be able to warm themselves up a little bit, able to figure out the strategies that we that Nebraska likes to bring out. And you were completely right. We started to see NWMS bring it back a little bit more. The issue was by the time they were able to get that full 60, like you said on basketball, it was a little too late in that map number one. So we can only hope now that maybe we can see a bit of a differential, maybe a 1-1 split at the end of map two as we can continue things forward. Or Nebraska might learn from their own lessons, Cam. They might be able to push forward and get a 2-0.
Yeah, it's like you said, it was just a little too late there for NWMS. And once you get to 232 points or so, you have yourself a lead. At that point, you just start to play any scrap time you can get. That's exactly what Nebraska did. They actually get a solid hold there on P5 to close it out. But we'll go ahead and move into map <laughs> two. And it's search and destroy. And it's the big topic that everybody's kind of been bringing up with these GAs this year. And that's another new thing. Uh, they're always new. The GAs are always coming with something new. Stuns, gung-ho, whatever it is. It seems like anything that... I might like or that I might want to use all of a sudden now there's a GA for it and I got to completely change my play stuff. style but the big one right now for search and destroy obviously smokes and sniper rifles both of them way too strong to be in the game at this point pros amateurs and college players they all would probably be abusing uh, smokes and snipers if they were in the game right now so hopefully we can see maybe something get figured out on that end because I know that makes the game mode a lot more enjoyable to watch uh, but it, it's still going to be an interesting one. Like we say, neither of these teams have played in the CCL just yet. So they're both kind of trying to make a name for themselves. You have to think they've put in quite a bit of practice leading up to this moment. What strategies do you have in place? How are you going to employ them? Who's going to be doing what? And how is the other team going to react to it? We're all we're going to get to see all those different questions answered in just a few minutes. Uh, but it was a pretty great hard point there in the first map for, for what I saw of it. I, I was impressed with the gameplay. Oh, definitely. There were quite a few different players that we definitely need to keep an eyes on going into the Search and Destroy matchup, and even future different game modes as well. One player that really stuck out to me, and you might be thinking I'm going to say Gray and Zyphos, and no, they were pretty cool too, but Boosty was able to not necessarily carry all NW's team, but he was able to get so many different kills on the board, and he was the main stranglehold for a, you know initially claiming a lot of these points before... Well, more often than not, especially the beginning of the game when Nebraska came in and wiped him away in a 2v1. Yeah, I I enjoy watching Boosty. I enjoy anybody who's willing to to get outside their comfort zone or the comfort zone of basically everyone who's using the same three-gun meta and throw a bullfrog into the lineup and come out and drop 30-plus yeah. kills with it, throwing executions on the hills, whether that was intentional or not. Uh, that's just basically embarrassing your opponent when you get the opportunity. But the bullfrog, it's definitely a viable weapon. You get that bigger magazine count uh capable of getting more kills with one mag i can see a viability to it in the league right now and i think we got a player who's, who's letting us all know that there is some viability to it and he's comfortable with it so i hope to see it again in map two now i feel like we kind of have to talk about gray and Zyphos a little bit they were crazy in the beginning Zyphos was able to put so many different kills on the board every single well it felt like moments but gray he had a different alternative his idea was to rush directly onto the point, eliminate anyone that went away, and then him and Zyphos concurrently were able to push up in these stranglehold money hills and make sure that they weren't taken over by the enemy team whatsoever. And I think going forwards in this season, Cam, we're going to see a whole lot of that. Yeah, anytime t you have two players on your team that are just slaying the entire map, it makes things a lot easier. You just kind of fill in the holes, jump on the hill, soak up that time. But you're absolutely right. Those two players were just absolutely phenomenal in the last game. And for Zyphos, it comes in the form of an assault rifle that's always huge to just kind of open everything up for the squad. I mean, oftentimes they kind of come as a, t as a tandem, really, your subs and your AR players. You need them both to be working in unison. If one is doing all the work, the other is, is slack. It, it needs to be coming from both. But without a doubt, a good submachine sub gun presence is going to make an, easy, an even easier AR presence. So they're kind of working together there. And you got to yeah. like to see it if you're in Nebraska. Uh, but we'll see how it, how it changes as we move into a slower game mode, obviously, with Search and Destroy. Like we say, no sniper rifles. So the ARs, just as, if not even more important, holding down those longer sight lines. See which team's got the, uh, the upper hand as we move into it. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. I'm really curious to see if maybe a slower game mode will be in the favor of NWMS. We saw them play the rotates a lot slower, going from points to points. So I'm wondering here, if maybe having much more close-in and tactical version of well, the game mode of you know search and destroy might be more in their benefit. Now, of course, you know rifle smokes all GA, all that fun stuff. I think this might be a much more even terrain for both teams. Uh, yeah, I totally can agree. It's a, it's a situation where. Your gun skill is obviously really important in Search and Destroy, but what about your your game sense, your game awareness? Do you know yeah. what to do when you oh, get yeah. in certain situations? What's your clutch gene like when it's a 1v2? Are you going to be shaking in your boots? Are you nervous? Or are oh, you going to hunker down like Parasite on the main stage and clutch up 1v4 to put your team into the next round closer to that 25k prize? That's the question that's going to be answered here when we get into the search and destroy, we'll see who has that clutch gene. But I, I agree with you, Max. I think it's an opportunity for NWMS to pick up a map here. Sure, you get out slated map one. It's hard point. 
it's raid though. It's 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 one of those maps, so you just gonna have to put it behind you and get ready for map two. So out of all these players, which player do you think is gonna get that one before? It's gonna happen. Oof. Oh, and on checkmate two, ooh, it's gonna happen. Come on. Checkmate is a very interesting map. I, I I mean I guess I have to go with Ghosty. He's got the firepower for it. He's got the fifty round mag. If all four players show up in his sights, I'm sure he's gonna, sure have, he's gonna have enough bullets to put him down with that bullfrog. Uh, but we'll get to see it a little bit. And uh, you, you mentioned checkmate is the map. That's probably the one where having a smoke grenade, having a sniper rifle could really, really be huge. Uh, but with no smokes, there's just so much information for the other team to have on you. You got to really be playing those crosses to know where players are at. But I heard Shift in the other uh, stream, too, say it, bringing up a great point as well. There, it, there's lanes that are going to be left open when you're playing in that top plane. Such a powerful position. It's probably the more favorable bomb site. But when you're playing oh. for that, you're leaving a lot of different places on the map open for people to sneak by, potentially flank. So you got to be paying attention to everything if you're on checkmate. It's going to be kind of the luck of the draw type thing with those flanks. Uh, I mean, whether or not you get good timing, that COD timing. I mean, look at that COD timing there that last round, especially Cushy. Almost able to clutch up a triple kill right at the very end. He gets traded out and they lose the round. But even then, that was still one heck of a performance right there from Cushy himself. Only a double kill. He couldn't find that final one. Had he been able to, I think that would have been the first round in their favor. Well, I actually hadn't even realized round one started. So just goes to show where I'm at right now. Still dealing with things, but we, I can see the game. So this is great. And like you say, 1-0 start for Nebraska. That is always going to be nice on defense. It's this year expected to win your defenses. Now they get into offense and just kind of what I was talking about, this push into the plane going to be so important every round. You see a couple players there for NWMS trying to slow down the push. It's up to Trav right now who's been spotted out. Going to be a tough situation. We'll see who decides to open things up and play bait. Xyphos, though, with a huge kill pushing up from that bottom plane. ATB gets spotted out. And a kill comes back in for NWMS, so we're all tied at three apiece. Another player falls for Nebraska. Yeah, it's, things are heating up a little bit more. Things are looking really good for NWMS right now. Able to hide away a little bit more. ATB taking some damage, needs to heal up. But from behind, it's going to be another one. Gray's able to find some pop shot damage. I believe that might have been on Disarray. But even then, he's not able to confirm the kill. It's going to be ATB now, walking around, lurking down underneath the wings of the plane, looking to see if anyone's going to be from below. But no, that's not going to be the right answer as Gray comes around seemingly unnoticed, trying to get the flank on Cushy and Disarray. Now, Cam, look and see what Gray's going to do right now. He's going to get clutch from the side, but ATB's going to fall. Two left alive. Gray needs to be able to clutch things up right now if they want to get a 2-0, or it's going to be a 1-1. But suddenly, everyone disappears. NWMS are able to find the win. They evacuate the premises, and they're able to find the final shot on the Gray. I How was just... the heck were they able to stay on the plane for so long? Yeah, that was absolutely insane. I, I was just talking about how much opens up on the map when you don't have smokes and you got guys playing the top plane, it leaves things open. And how about when numbers start to fall and you're in a 2v2 situation, it just becomes an all-out fiasco around the plane. You really got to crank up your headset because you just never know when someone's going to be climbing, falling off that table near the bomb, or just making any so kind of audio cue. You need to be picking up on those. Uh, this is a map where, again, you really want to have your beaches cranked to their full volume. We see on the other side of things, another push into the top of the plane. Got to get that trophy down. And if you're Trav, you're in a very, very big position here. You are the first line of defense here playing on top of this bomb spot that everybody has to play. It's, it's a good one. You got Cushy here deciding, do I make this peak? Is someone going to have my trade? Mm. Such a oh, nerve-wracking no, push. Trav. Cam, this is scary right now. Look at how great Nebraska is. They're able to find all but one. Sonny's the last one left alive. This has been great positioning from them so far. Sonny, though, is able to find Gray. That's going to be two more swarming through, and they're going to be right above him. If they're not able to find or secure any of these kills, he might be able to stall things out, but that's not going to be the case whatsoever. Nebraska able to find the second round on the board, and you were completely right again. You know, we saw a lot of team play coming out from WMS's side. Nice push up. Travis got the first kill, able to glide that into a second headshot there. But where was the third? There were three in the plane, but that last one never came by to get the trade. It's or the right. Did, it was too late. Yeah, it's the right strategy to just send bodies around that corner to try to open things up. You got to play your trades. But Trav, like you said, does a really, really good job there at slowing it down with the two piece. And I mean, outside of pushing into B and trying to play trades, I don't know what else you really do on this map. Like I say, for the ARs on defense, it's just sit back, watch everything else. Uh, and leave it to your SMG players in the plane to try to slow things down. Again, we see another push into the top of the plane, and this time it's disarray in the position that Trav was last time.
first line of defense near the bomb, and this might be a strategy that we see work. Can Nebraska push around the plane in a different way to try to open things up on a flank? Yeah, this is an interesting position coming out from WMS as well. Able to drop down. It's going to be the bomb of the possession of Nebraska's side. They have to go around and see maybe if A-Site might be the better alternative to go, but it's Cushy versus the world, it seems, as we see so many different players from Nebraska heading over to our right side of the map. Even then, ATB, though, on the left side, almost being seemingly swarmed around. Cushy needs to evacuate the plane, but he's going to meet the eyes of ATB, who's able to find him instead. Two won't make that zero left alive. Now it's a quick getaway. The whole kill feed going up in flames against WMMS as Nebraska is able to find yet another round. This is the first time we've been able to see them get two in a row now. And notice how much of a differentiation, or at least, I suppose, adapting we saw from Nebraska. They didn't focus on the plane this time. They focused more on a site off on their left side. It, yeah, it is, it's a strategy that you, we might expect to see a little more here. We talk about how strategy and gun play kind of go toe-to-toe, -to -toe, I guess you might say, and how strategy can be the way to beat good gun play. That time, you just saw Nebraska playing the kills, playing it like a team deathmatch uh, where you don't respond, and they picked up all the kills in that round, didn't lose any lives of their own. As we see a different strategy come in from NWMS, try to push over towards A, it's just so difficult to get that plant down. As you can see, ATB has full lines of sight on that. Disarray is going to have a very difficult time. Probably going to need to draw first blood, or at least pick up a kill to even the odds as we fall. As we see Sunny, the first one to fall. And ATB is just holding down this A-bomb. Not going to be a chance for Disarray to push around. Now Cushy has to pick it up and try to reset here in a two versus four situation. It's not going to be easy. A ETB has been straight nasty with that XM4. He's been able to find a lot of opening picks now on A-Site, but he seemingly has disappeared yet again. They're, excuse me, they're like ghosts. Boosty now, the last one alive, is able to find the jumping dice, but even then, not able to confirm the kill until it's too late. Immediately traded out. And that's going to be Nebraska with three in a row now against WMMS. And it just seems like they may have found out exactly what their strategies are. If you want to win the round against Nebraska, you have to take care of ATB. He's been able to find these long-range kills, and he's been able to completely stifle any kind of aggressive plan that WNW likes to bring on the attack. Without a doubt. Plan. And right now... If you're NWMS, first things first, you have to win this defense. I mean, on this map, defense is going to be easier to win than most maps. Uh, we just saw them drop the last offense. You're going to have to win this defense here. That's where things start. And then after that, it's just a matter of finding some confidence to take more challenges and win some more gunfights. Obviously, we talk about Search and Destroy being more strategic, but you got to start winning some gunfights. And right now, BK Boosty doing exactly that, that bullfrog that I was having so much fun watching. And map one stays out and map two picks up the two-piece. Disarray finds another. And after Boosty fell, it becomes a three versus one situation. But don't count out Zyphos just yet. We saw what he was doing in map one. Got the gunny, this man does. He's got that XM4 starting things from the back of the plane. Going to want to push up towards B here. Still needs to get the bomb down. It's going to be no easy task, you might say. But don't... Well, I was going to say, don't count on Boosty just yet. He did his job. He got a double kill. And more importantly, he took down ATB as the opening pick there. And, of course, look at that. They won the round because of it. We're going to see the replay again of him taking down Trav and ATB. And it wasn't quite the opening pick, but it was still the opening engagement from him. And just how clean that was, being able to go into the under... I don't know, what would you call that? Undercarriage of the plane. Being able to find that double kill. Finding ATP is the key to winning these rounds. No doubt, and I know I'm trying to think of the word for that. I guess you just—I mean, you just say under the, the plane, but yeah, the belly, or there, there definitely is the a more technical stomach. term. The stomach, yeah, the hull maybe of the plane. Oh yeah, it's like a ship, like a battle little ship. vocab night here on CCL. You're getting <laughs> it all as we see another push in towards B. Boosty, last one alive for his team right now. Gonna go ahead and pick up that first kill, but not before he falls after that. So five to two, a commanding lead for Nebraska. Yeah, you were, we, were get, we were just talking about that boosty. I mean, I, I'll say it again. That bullfrog is certainly seeming to be viable, at least in his hands. He's seeming to have a lot of success with it. Who knows? Maybe we start to see that become another weapon. You've got the 2 AR meta. Wouldn't hate to see a 2 SMG meta. I always appreciate mm. things being more diverse and mixing it up, but he's definitely putting on for the bullfrog fam right now. Do you think we're going to see more bulldogs from them going forward? Or maybe other teams watching this right now. Do you think we'll see more bulldogs after? I, I don't know if we will, but I wouldn't be against it. You know, I think I anytime either. you can diversify the scene and add more stuff, it's always, I'm always open to it.
Ooh, but look what they're open to as well. On the left side right now, almost able to find the plan to go down. One does fall sweet Xyphos. Cushy going in, being traded out immediately. Only one left alive now, potentially staying themselves in the game. This will be a 2-0 now in the favor of Nebraska. Able to clean up two maps now, back to back, pretty handedly against dub NWMS right now. That was for half. But even then, you know, at the beginning, or even towards the end of points, we did see NW able to put some points in rounds on the board against Nebraska. But by the time they adapt, before, or by the time they're able to find the key to winning these games, it's just too late. Nebraska counter adapts. Yeah, Nebraska just had it figured out there in terms of slaying again. Like I said, it almost felt like a, a TDM with no response. And it was ATB, the player you mentioned a few times throughout that game, Really having the big impact, I think, finishes 11 or 12 kills in that final round. Just letting his team make the push towards A, kind of being that bait, laying the bait out in the water. And then as soon as his, he, he saw his prey, he attacked and, and took the bite there, getting that, that two-piece in the final round. ATB was huge. Xyphos was huge. Uh, these guys are just playing it out right now for Nebraska. If you're NWMS, you really got to get back to the drawing board. And I think it's that the momentum, that confidence that I was talking about. You can see it. They're just a little bit weary to take gunfights, a little hesitant. You got to kind of just let those fears go. As the COD egos say, you just have to feel like you're the best player on the map at all times. Uh, find your ego. And let that take over, I think, is, is going to be the key moving into this control. But either way, we will get ready to move on. Nebraska take the 2-0 lead. I think something we've noticed, too, or at least from our end, is that there's been a lot more trade potential coming out from Nebraska's side. Now, for instance... By that I mean ATP, if he's not able to find the double kill and he gets traded out immediately after finding one, there's always someone else from Nebraska able to clear out that second enemy. But from the NW's end, there's almost nobody else there. They're all playing by themselves for the most part, all trying to go for these singular flanks and lurks, and there's not as much team chemistry to really bond themselves together and find these trades. The one time we did see a trade, though, was round number two. It was, I don't recall exactly who put Trav was on top of the little box or what is that cable inside the in the plane yeah. and when yeah. that first player from nw pushed up he got traded out and then a double kill happened from trap and there was no third player to help things out absolutely yeah it's it, like i say it's not only just having your own ego and having your own confidence but it's having it in the guy next to you who's going to be the one to get your trade in case you fall got to be up and down the roster you got to trust everybody around you and Obviously, these players putting a lot of effort and a lot of practice into getting ready for these games. You know they all know each other's tendencies and what they like to do on the map. So it's just a matter of putting all that practice into work and just throwing it out there on the map and just sending it, really. I mean, you can't hold back yeah. at all. This is it. The moment has come. The season is starting, of course, the 2021 season of the CCL. And where would you rather be right now, Max, than here casting these games, having a great time with you? And I'm looking forward to map three. We'll see if NWMS can turn it around. There is a good chance they could turn, turn it around. We are returning back to raids, so if NWMS are able to learn their lessons from what they did a little bit more underwhelmingly compared to Nebraska in that first map, this is their chance to turn chance things, to around. things around. Of course, of course the points are going to be slightly different than how it is on Hardpoint. The mode itself is different as well, but in terms of the rotates and the trades and the way the NWMS coordinates themselves, this is their chance to bring things to a 2-1. Without a doubt. And I'll tell you what, I was really, really excited to see Raid again as the map. We're getting the double dose of Raid. I mean, just how could you possibly disagree like with the fact that it's just right? It's just one of the greatest <laughs> maps of all time. And don't argue. We, we don't we, there's no argument to be made there uh, as we see things already starting to unfold in Nebraska, picking up right where they left off. They got that first hit done on A. And, you know, Raid is one of these control maps where there is it's, it's really probably one of the only maps where being on offense can be seen as a major advantage. It's pretty easy to capture zone A like Nebraska has just done and then work your way over towards B, try to get control and get the ticks done over there. Most maps, defense heavily favored uh, in control, but here on raid, a map where the offense is a pretty viable chance to win is right now you're seeing Cushy pick up a huge two-piece in the back of basketball area. He's going to throw that nade check just to see if anyone else is home, but Disarray is cleaning up the remaining survivors. So right now, it's up to Nebraska to try to get these kills and get... They, they got to get a hold on the spawns before they can go for that cap. I have received word that I'm seemingly very quiet on the stream. I do apologize, but I'll try to speak a little bit louder. But speaking of louder, look at NWMS all melting away. It's going to be now up to this B point now. It's been under control of A already. Nebraska only needs one more, and now the pressure's on for NW. 
The bodies keep falling, though. Back and forth. Look at where Disarray is. He has a great angle for potentially anyone crossing from underside. But no, he's going to relegate away from that position. Look for Gray. He's not able to find the shots. Never mind. He is. He finds Gray. But even then, Disarray has one more to potentially worry about. It's to be trapped down below on his sides. or two more different bodies having to take control of. And with a minute left in this round, it's going to be up to this defense, slowly whittling away as Nebraska are trying to push towards the underside of B. He can go for a play. Plenty of time to, like you say, set it up and take your time. You still have 50 seconds left on the clock. Not a big disparity between the lives as ATB threw a life pack to NWMS. Accidentally fell off over there on the side. And we'll just act like we didn't see it for his sake. Here's Trav, though, trying to make the play out the back. And I think this is what has Ooh. to happen. You've got to push out back laundry. Disarray says, not yet, my friend, and sets him down. But still, you got Gray making the wide flank. This is what you need to see if you're Nebraska to open things up. You got to control the spawn before you get on the point. Get that map control. And Gray gets the kill on back basketball. Another challenge comes from Sonny. He picks up that kill. More trades back and forth. And it looks like NWMS is going to hold on for at least the time being. No respawns left for Nebraska. So that'll do it for this first round. A nice showing from the Bearcats here to put it up one nothing in map three trying to hang on and that's what i mean look at how much they've been able to play off of each other they're playing like a team now cam they're able to find those trades and even when there's single-handed plays coming out from nw side they're able to get time either to trade out but if they can't trade out at least they're pushing themselves up so far that if you lose a buy cost yourself a respawn it's not detrimental to losing the site sunny here exactly look at that double kill holding down the positioning not pushing up too far either He's able to find the double kill and push Nebraska back just enough to win that first round. But the big question, Cam, is can they do it again? That is the question that everyone is asking these days. And, you know, you saw it from Nebraska there where they had so much time to set up a hit and rotate through laundry or through kitchen to try to, like I say, get some map control before jumping on the point. But it was NWMS who did a really good job at seeing that and slowing it down. Cushy starting this round off with a nice two-piece, and another's going to fall. So full control of the A point, and at this point, you might think about just stacking it to try to get that tick to go faster, but instead, Boosty says, you stay down on the point, I'll hold the front. This Bullfrog is absolutely ripping right now. Only six kills so far in this game, but we've seen Boosty all throughout this series have success with his gun. I'll tell you, it's just fun to see something new as we see more kills coming in at the back of Laundry. No way you get that kill off that hit glitch. I would have been off my rocker. Zyphos, though, with a couple big kills to slow down this push after NWMS is able to get A. Now we get to see how they handle this push over towards B. Holy moly. Nebraska now trying to clap things back a little bit more. A site has already been taken over by NW. They've been able to get that on both sides, or at least both teams have been able to relatively quickly. Now things are getting a little bit hairier, though. We're seeing a lot more destruction coming out from NW this time than Nebraska was able to even bring out on their own side before. Already having a little bit of control seemingly of the B site. You have to ask yourself, where is Nebraska? They're all trying to get on by, but it's a double kill from Boosty and Disarray. Able to clap things out just a little bit more. And it's really shutting down the rotates that the red team's trying to bring out. Disarray now hiding in the rocks, waiting for another rotate to come on by. Trav now going down the stairs, not able to find a single shot. Dies in a basketball room. But Disarray waiting at the top of the window might be able to find yet another one. And it's been a while since we've seen that kill feed kind of go back and forth. Disarray is able to prove me wrong though, finding Xyphos. But even then, the trades go throughout. Look at the respawn, 7 to 15. MW seemingly has this in the bag. Oh They're able to hold things down a little bit more, but they have to get that final quadrant to take the round. And the player I'm looking at right now is Boosty on this five kill streak. It's just been an absolute wrench in the plans of Nebraska. Another kill coming in for Boosty, and finally it takes two players to take him down. Was having such a good time in that basketball court, picking up kills. Again, you got to hold the spawns, hold the map control before you start to get on the point. That's something that MWMS has done pretty well so far in this round. They've got the, re the respawn advantage. They have two ticks on B. It's all going to come down to Nebraska right now, just trying to hang on for dear life as they sit back, just let the fight come to them on defense. But again, it's going to be Boosty making a big play with this flank through Kitchen. He's got a teammate there to help. Instead, they're going to cut money, and all the kills are about to funnel in right now. Two in the favor of NWMS. Another comes in from Cushy, and Boosty gets the fourth with a shot punch. What else do you expect out of him? That looks like it's going to do it for this round as the tick comes in. 
and that is a very, very clinical way to get things done on raid offense, playing control if you're NWMS. Clinical is a great way of putting it. Circle, too, if we want to keep on with the metaphor as well. <laughs> it was a beautiful <laughs> round coming out from NW. They were able to hold down the line as long as humanly possible. And Nebraska, you know, they're almost falling to the same trap that uh, on map number one of Raid, we saw N uh, NW fall for the same things. They're not playing as a team. They're rushing in, trying to find these singles for themselves, whittled down the respawns, and they're unable to do so. Now, we might be able to see that 2-1 if, if NW can keep it up for yet another round. If not, we have to see a flawless comeback from Nebraska. Nebraska's just got to take a, a, a page right out of the book at NWMS. You got the cap in your first offense on A, like you're about to, it looks like, do here, but not before these red-hot guns of NWMS come through. Boosty continues the rampage up to 18 kills, been streaking all map long, and Disarray says, you guys wanted to have someone fall off the map, I'll go ahead and do the same. We'll even things up. As he falls off the map, it seemed like over towards that blue van at A. And now an interesting strategy from Nebraska. Send a couple players to both sites. They were just pushing A. They made a, a presence shown there. Now they're going to switch things over to B. And looks like they could have a good chance of stacking this one right away. They already have two ticks. And with three players on the point, that bar is just going to keep on filling up. But a contest comes in. And the kills come in as well for NWMS. So not able to get B. Now a real decision is going to come into play. To extend this round, you got to get one of these points to add to that shot clock at the top. Right now, though, the kills from NWMS are huge over here at B to just hold off this attack. And we'll see what Nebraska decides to do here as the round needs to get extended. Final minute left in this round, potentially. Things did not go well on B site as much as it normally does. Well, maybe not. They tried to go for the split push, like you said. B site, the one that always gives them so much more difficulty, was partially captured, but they weren't able to do enough because of that. Now, A site isn't really much better. They're able to get some control, but even then, we see a lot of NW able to come in and swarm things around and make sure nobody can get on really either site. Just is now on a five kill streak, able to take down so many different bodies, but even then, having such a huge power position, he's going to relegate himself oh. away a little bit more, but he's able to find ATB in the process. Look at that whole kill feed. It's nothing but green and red like a Christmas tree. Only Gray is going to separate it with a single frag grenade kill, but Disarray is going to go away at the same wrong time and miss out on the positioning there. 17 seconds left, and things are looking great for the green team right now. Only eight respawns remaining in the sign for Nebraska on the control, and at this rate, oh. we're going to be seeing map number four. That being said, though, Sunny able to hold down the line a little bit more. 12 seconds turns into 11, and Sunny still trying to find those pop shots. The rest of his team behind him, even swimming Trav's able to get away, <laughs> but it's not enough. Five seconds, it's now finally contested. So many pop shots going through. The pre-fires are crazy, but it's still not enough for Nebraska to fully get onto the... Never mind. They just took over B. An extra minute now left on the clock, Cam. And things might just be turning around now for Nebraska. Trav was showing off that breaststroke in the pool for a little bit. But you're right, I did not expect Nebraska to get point B there. They had a nice push that fell through. And then finally just able to get it in the last seconds to extend this round. But it's really, really going to be a tough task ahead as eight respawns still remain for NWMS. They are down to now zero respawns remaining. So... You're going to need a stack, and this is something I saw done in an optic scrim. It doesn't look like it's going to get done right now as I bring up my fanboy optic scrims. <laughs> you can get a stack if you get the kills, you get them to spawn out, and you put four players on the hill, you can get the cap pretty fast, but not today for Nebraska. NWMS able to pick up map three, and we're headed to a map four. Wow. You know, I wasn't really sure in that final round what we were going to see. I thought Nebraska would get back, but NWMS, they had that right amount of calculation, precision, and aggression that was a little lackluster in those previous two maps but they found the perfect balance on what is generally a lot of teams to be probably the hardest game mode in the competitive pool right now and props to them that was really amazing absolutely i agree one of the more difficult game modes to master if you're a team and i think we saw some pretty clinical play right there from nwmsu just really good on offense to get zone A to start things off. You set yourself up with a more difficult point to get as the second point, but then you have more time. You still have respawns to work with, uh, and they're able to win three straight rounds. It was just Nebraska couldn't get anything done there on offense in that final round. They finally get zone B, the more unconventional route to get B first, and the respawns just weren't there to, to get that final point over at A, so they end up losing that one. And you talk about momentum in esports, how important that is in a series starting to shift back in the direction of NWMSU. 
big map three win there after a, a really strong showing from Nebraska at maps one and two. And now it's really feeling like anybody's ball game, right? Like you just don't know what's going to happen as we head in to our second hard point. You have to think that the slaying power is going to improve for the Bearcats. And if Ghosty, I'm sorry, if Boosty can continue, continue to do what Boosty's been doing all day long with that bullfrog, I think Nebraska is going to be in for it here. Yeah, and I think the main concern, if you're a fan of WMS right now, or the Bearcats, is that if you're going into hardpoint again, they did not have a great showing in the very first map. With that being said, though, Nebraska did. But we saw NW bring it back on control. And we've been harping on this, and I'm really curious to see if that's adaptation or just how they play control in general. Now it's going to come back down to hardpoint again. We're going to see hardpoint, and I believe then if we do get to see map number five, it'll be search and destroy again. This is looking heavily in the favor of Nebraska right now. There's no way to sugarcoat a cam, but it's not too late for this team. They've been able to consolidate themselves together. Uh, yeah, I think what really impresses me most about NWMS and that win there in map three is that we expected them to have a better chance in search and destroy where they could slow things down, yeah. employ more strategy, and not, didn't have to worry so much about the gunplay. But there we just saw the gunplay really, really take a drastic step up. Uh, and, and I think not only with that, but it was strategy as well. Like we just saw them manage that control so much better, just knowing what to do on offense, which, which points to go to first, how to play those lives like we talked about. And now you get to go into another hard point. It's checkmate again. Checkmate, the way I see checkmate hard point, it's very, very mixy. It's so hard to know where anybody is spawning at any time. I think there's only maybe two hills on the entire map that you can be confident in holding for close to 60 seconds. So we'll see which team can manage the spawns better. The communication becomes even more important on checkmate again for those spawns, knowing where people are going to be on the map. That all goes back to your communications with your team. But I don't know. I was feeling very confident that Nebraska was going to take this one. But now in NWMS, they've opened my eyes a little more. Yep, Boosty right. with that bullfrog. I don't know how it's going to work out in a checkmate hard point, but I think we're about to find out in just a couple seconds. At this point, you know, in the very first map, we said it was all gray in Zyphos. And then we said a little bit of Boosty. But now we're this far in four maps. Boosty, Cushy, Disarray, Gray, Zyphos, all of them have really shown you know, in a term, in a kind of way, in being an MVP for each of their respective rounds. Certainly. But now we have to see if Cushy, Disarray, Sunny, and Boosty can all do it again. And on Checkmate, we saw how they performed too. A lot of that was down to ATB, but you mentioned it yourself, Cam. That was around very slower rounds on Search and Destroy. This is going to be much more high octane. Absolutely. And off the start, I love this P1 hill. You got to be paying attention. I think it was Morgan and who's going to be back on in just a little bit for the next match. Made a great point that if you're going to be clipping a, something, a highlight here, highlight here probably going to be probably going to be at the start of these these checkpoint or I'm sorry, these checkmate hard points. That's a little tough to say. I mean, you open up in this plane at the top, and your SMGs can run in there for a two, maybe three, maybe even a four man spray if we're lucky. We know again that Boosty's got those 50 round mags in the Bullfrog, so he's capable of doing it. We'll see who wins the opening break, though, as we push right into the top of the plane on Checkmate Hardpoint. And right away, we do see some elevated action coming up from Trav as well. What you mentioned too, Cam, we do want to keep and see how these spawns also revol revolve themselves around, switch over time as well. But we see already the plane contested, not a lot of traction or leeway given on both sides. Disarray, though. Hushi, I mean, able to find Zyphos. That's going to be an important pick off right away. Gray is still going to be on site the site itself. He's seemingly the only one on Nebraska being able to do so. Everyone outside of Nebraska looking around to see if they can be sharks in the water, finding smaller fish. But maybe these fish are ready to bite back like piranhas. Hushi's able to find one, but even then, he's not able to clutch up and find another. Trav, it's taken down the same angle he did in Search and Destroy in Cam. Things are looking pretty good for at WMS. That kill for Cushy was absolutely massive to get control of the spawns for P2. You saw it was him and I believe Zyphos, the only players in the back right quadrant of your map, and it becomes Cushy who gets the kill. So now you see that lock on your screen, the P2 hill going to be... Oh, wow. The, the spawns almost did flip, but they're still going to be in favor of NWMS as they continue to funnel towards the hill. You see Nebraska trying to do whatever they can to get towards the hill, but they're spawning out. NWMS is going to be in a good position for a hold here on P2. 
Ooh, but look at where this p2 hill is right now even this is looking so good for wms they have woken up since the first two maps boosty's able to find yet another one zyphos is going to go down the trade comes out from atp and even then your control is going to remain now in nebraska's favor never mind only one on site it's going to be gray already taking some splash damage he's going to be taken down by the frag grenade and that's going to be control again for nw they've been able to have the majority control here and they're almost eclipsing the amount of points that nebraska has yeah it's even despite getting the kills you get the four kills if you're nebraska there and you start to push towards the point but nwms still had the spawn so they're able to just keep funneling the hill uh they get those kills and they do get the majority of the time they're on p2 but like you say we're moving towards a tie game after the first two hills oh. and we go over to p3 this is where i really think things start to get a little mixy i mean for starters if you want to be on the hill you're pretty much exposing yourself to gunfire from a plethora of directions but after that it's just so hard to know where players are spawning that's again where the communication with your teammates comes in so important and right now if you're cushy it's like hey they're coming from p2 they're pushing forklift they're hitting my a lane like help me out right now and if you're disarray he's helping himself on the point with a two-piece starting to tick this lead up a little bit more for nwms and another kill comes in on the hill now Nebraska, their turn to flood, and the trades come in. It's Zyphos picking up the kill. Spawner is sunny. He's going to grab one. Boosty with that bullfrog. We know what that's about. That's a two-piece on the hill. And MWMS back in control this one before we start to rotate towards P4. Way back on Raid 2, we saw NWMS play these single-player plays a lot where they weren't really trading each other out. We're seeing a lot of trades right now, but generally we've been seeing the rotates from NW be a lot more cleaner than Nebraska has been this past game. Of course, with that being said, though, Nebraska does take control P4 now, I believe, on the board. Zyphos pushes up, and a field of green, though he's able to find one, a double kill nearly, but Bustio is able to find at the very end. Although, with all that being said and done, it's going to be a rotate coming through on both sides. The man advantage is going to be in a favor. Nebraska as they push on up, but Disarray's trying to hide in the corner, but Trav is able to find the trade instead. Of course, that's not without the trade of itself. Boosty's able to find yet another one, and it's really not one single team able to dedicate themselves to the hard point for too long. Even then, it's evened out 58 and 58 between the two teams. What more can you ask for at this point? Both teams just relentlessly throwing bodies on the hill. And as they continue to fall, it's like, well, I'm going to spawn up and keep flooding. Like, why rotate at this point? You got Disarray pushing 10 seconds of hill time, but it doesn't matter because he's grabbing kills off a of gray. ATV trying to hang on with dear life as we start to rotate over towards front wood. And right now, the spawns in favor of Nebraska. They will be pushing through back yeah, generators. Rotate. A big kill to start there from Cushy on the hill, but... The spawns again so big for nebraska they're able to flood on through and get the kills disarray absolutely playing out of their mind right now 15 kills to start this one off uh but still it's just those spawns in the back there when you're spawning by the hill you're gonna have such a better chance to get into it keep flooding and get those trades right now nebraska with the hold as you see gray here realizing a player trying to push the back of the plane gonna rotate back just barely gets bad timing still picks up the kill and another one down the hallway why not make it two that is going to be close to a 60-point hold if Nebraska can keep this one going, which it looks like they will. So they start to rotate back to P1 to reset this map. Nebraska is going to have the 40-point lead. That's right. It's going to be a huge lead right now for the favor of Nebraska. But even then, Zypho is hiding around, trying to find as much as he can. He does. He's able to. And that was a really good rotate from the beginning of this point from NW. But even then, it's now going to be locked away. The rotate favors back inside of the plane. We're back to P1, baby. But as soon as things are captured by Nebraska, they get shut away. Now it's all a hiding game for Bustio and I believe Disarray hiding inside the plane. Now they're able to get that man advantage. Of course, doesn't last forever. Bustio and Sunny are going to fall. It's going to go back somewhat into the favor of Nebraska, but it's all going to be held into contestion. That's not going to stop Gray, though. He's playing a very sneaky game, waiting for potentially Sunny to go on up. But instead of Sunny, we Bustio. But he's reloading right at the perfect time for them, and they still manage to find the kill. It's going to go back and forth now. Gray trying to hide away. Gets up close and personal, but he gets a gun barrel into his face. As things are slowly still stalled out but it's not as bad of a deficit as it used to be for nw well and yeah i'd like to point out this is what was happening at the start of the game you see number four there on your mini map getting hunted down by six is going to fall but those kills in the back there before that rotation 
end up being so so important unfortunately if your nwms are unable to get those kills you will not have spawns for p2 and now the rotation is going to be difficult but we have a contest coming in early a couple players trying to make a kill onto trav trav just holding it down though six hp this 1v1 and he will get some help from his teammates to hang on but the spawns flip look out nwms spawning in the back orange they start to push through kills coming in for nebraska one last player it's disarray trying to make whatever they can happen they will fall and now the spawns back to where they should be if you're nebraska you just have to keep holding down the front of this hill play the cross and this is looking like it's almost 60 seconds of hill time for nebraska here on p2 oh that's a lot of kill silence a really solid lead now developing or i guess extending in nebraska's favor this is a much slower game than we saw hardpoint on raid 2. we're seeing a lot of gunplay happening but a lot more equally contestion going out from both sides that's not really helpful though if you're on nw you want to be able to you know get the points on the board and now almost double nebraska has the favor again it's gonna be a ro another rotate back onto the plane and things are going to the favor nebraska yet again ray is able to find cushy that's another top leader gone on nw side sunny from below is able to clear away some of those nebraska enemies behind or below the plane but that's not going to help them too much if they get traded out immediately atp is able to find sunny and it's just a huge back and forth game but the site now under the plane is in the favor yet again of these red Nebraskas. They're able to hold it down, and they're looking for anything they can. Sonny's going to be trying to push on forwards, but everyone's getting into these trades. And now it's Nebraska who's able to get these 2v1 situations, able to hold things down more and more. Damn, Zypho's coming in from behind, is able to oh. find nothing as Bustio gets shot down instead. It's a back and forth, and Bustio with a free case holding it down single-handedly. Cam, do you think he's able to, or is he gonna be taken down by Gray and company? Dude, Boosty he is done. playing boosted right now. And now it's Cushy's turn to pick up some kills, and now Boosty's turn to pick up. These guys are absolutely trying to keep this one at where it's at. They're trying to bring it back, doing whatever they can to claw and itch their way back into this one. And Boosty is the one leading the charge with 23 kills. And how about Zyphos, though, on the other side? 32 and 18 right now. And I believe that statistic up in the top right is is total kills like actual full kills that you got yourself not just eliminations that you were a part of so zyphos is absolutely cleaning up the map right now but so is boosty trying to do whatever he can he's gonna fall and right now a good hold on this p4 hill for nwms it's a tough one to get a lot of time on zyphos though right on cue with a couple crazy kills showing up the movement why not make it three as he continues to push through to try to flip the spawns for p5 that's going to be a big break for Nebraska as NWMS started to climb their way back into this one. Uh, Nebraska says, nope, we're going to close the door on that comeback for now. But still, a solid 15 seconds on this final on this hill before you start to rotate. It's just going to be so important not to let Nebraska close it out here on P5. There's a potential 50-point difference now between whether or not we continue this series or we say goodbye to NW for the night. Nebraska, though, able to hold things down even more, are able to find these cross-range kills, but look at where the rotates are happening onto the new point. It's now originally in the favor of Nebraska, but not for too long, now solely in the favor of NW. It looks like it might have been a little contested at first, but the entire team is there. They managed to flip the spawns, now it's in their favor, and even though the majority of the map control is in Nebraska's side, they're not able to get into what's most important and that allows the positioning for nw to be nasty to find all these different picks unless you're trav and you flank from behind you're able to find not one not two but just one against the whole team but gray's able to help you out and find a double as well that's gonna be now the defenders on the hard point yet again those points racking up now what was once 50 now only down to maybe 30 points as things are getting more and more clutch and much more scary for nw side they're able to find some double kills especially on boosty's side the whole kill feed in their favor but they have to get onto the point there's no time to dilly dally with frag grenades but he's able to get there a little bit safely making sure it's all there and look where the rotate is in the hands of nwms yeah and a really good position there for disarray to be pushed up this far into the plane you're not going to be expecting that if you're xyphos one will fall nobody's going to be there for the trade still a contest comes in from trav and this is a huge gunfight right now on the top of the plane teammate helps come through from sunny gray trades it back out and back and forth they go like you say 228 points and ticking right now for nebraska if you're nwms you're playing this hill like your life depends on it typically a hill that both teams just kind of play for contest but right now nebraska is just soaking that hill time sunny with a big kill zyphos is the next one in line of defense he's going to keep cleaning things up just chuck a nade keep shooting anything you can to put firepower down the hallway 
as Nebraska continues to fight for this final four seconds that they need to win this map. Only three, two, maybe one point now on the board. It's going to be that. It's down to a single point between Nebraska and NW right now. If they can take over the site one more time. Wow. The last potential hard point that we see able to hold things down a little bit longer. They're able to get in. They find the final point. Nebraska, three now over one that we saw from NWMS. Three maps now in their favor. And that is going to be an extreme lead between the two teams. You gotta give it though to NWMS. They were able to really correct themselves from those first two maps and nearly brought it home. They did on control. They almost did on hard point. But unfortunately, but unfortunately, Nebraska, just a little too aggressive at times, were able to win these more single-handed plays. You're absolutely right. You gotta give it up to NWMS after they lose the first two maps. They come out in that raid control, played really, really well, win all three rounds. They sweep that raid control. Unfortunately, although the score might not represent it, this was a pretty close hard point oh, in yeah. the end. I mean, neither team, was, ex with the exception of one P2 hill for Nebraska, was able to get a full 60-second hold. Both teams are getting a lot of breaks. You saw a lot of killing back and forth, like you say, trades in the kill feed. Boosty was having their way, and if that's one thing you can take away from this series, it's that maybe we all need to wake up a little bit, wipe the crust out of our eyes, and put a bullfrog on our classes, because this man was absolutely frying with the 50 round mag i don't know about you max i might be signing off after this and getting to the pubs uh to test out a new class because i think i might have just got put onto something i mean i might have to join you there i mean the bulldog <laughs> was fantastic to see i i loved all the gunplay we saw i think the rotates coming out from both teams too is my favorite part of this whole series i love the search and destroy where it was a huge back and forth and i think even though they did lose a map beyond that on raid and control I feel like Search and Destroy was where Nebraska felt the most challenged in 1v1s. Yeah, I think that's uh, pretty safe to say. And I mean, like you, I, I will say, like you said, just without the ex with the exception of that one win on control there for NWMS, it did feel like Nebraska had the command throughout the series. You, you saw Xyphos there picking up close to 40 kills in that final hard point. Anytime you have an AR slaying like Xyphos was, it makes things a lot easier on you as a submachine machine gun player just run up fill those extra lanes sit on the hill really you could leave your controller on the desk if you want to at that point Xyphos is cleaning up the kills so you got to give credit to your ARs uh if you're in Nebraska really good showing out of them still like you say kudos to NWMS as well they put up a really solid fight and, and they win that control in a really handily fashion so you got to give them credit where credit's due absolutely but Cam, I think it's time for our little block to end. I believe we have a new matchup coming up after this, and it's going to be the last matchup of the night as well for the Bravo stream. It's been fantastic to be casting with you. It's been amazing to cast with these teams, and it's been amazing to have our producer as well. All, all fantastic, aside from some little bugs in the beginning, but that's what the new season is for. Cam, it's been amazing, and I hope we can do this more often together. Absolutely. I look forward to it, Max. I don't think this will be the last one for the two of no, us. No, not so. at all. Until next time.